For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. According to the world, tis the season to rejoice. Tis the season of Jesus Christ. According to the Bible, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in that. That's a verse that goes 365 days. For unto us a child is born. Supposedly the season that Christ was born, though it is not biblically, we stand here and preach that very birth. The very sinless life of a baby that was born in a manger, rejected by the world. He came unto his own, and his own received him not, the Bible records. That baby was born to die. As all men are born to die, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That gift of God, if I may preach today for your Christmas. Christmas is never in the Bible. And yet in this time that we take for Jesus Christ, let's look at the gift that was in the manger on a September morning. Born of a virgin. Probably the, the time of the tabernacles of the Jewish feast. Never of the Roman feast. That baby that God says through the Holy Spirit is the gift of God. The time of Christmas of gifts. That baby is a gift in a cradle where animals ate. And the Bible speaks about that baby, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. But you have taken the Lamb of God and you have turned it into a Satan clause which bears gifts of materialism that probably will not last next year or you will want the new and approved version by next Christmas, Lord willing. And yet God knows that you're going to die and he says, I will give you a gift, Jesus Christ, Romans 6.23, and that gift will be an eternal gift. It will not be sought back. It will not be brought back. It will always and forever satisfy the needs of a sinning man. It is a gift of God that was born in Bethlehem that fits all sizes. It's not an ugly sweater. It is for males. It is for females. It is for white. It's for black. It's for brown skinned people. And you don't need a coupon. You do not need money. There's no credit card. And in January, you don't open up the envelope and say, Oh my God, how much did I spend? And go bankrupt. It's the gift of God that is free. Put your wallet back in your pocket. Put your good deeds on the shelf. You don't need to go to midnight mass. You need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Not of works, least any man boasts. Now this gift is not to be eaten. You don't pop Jesus in your mouth and say, I'm saved, glory to God, now i got God breath. God breathe on them. Wrong contents. So the baby that was born about September in Bethlehem, that laid in the manger, is the gift of God. That baby would grow up and be nailed to a tree. He wouldn't be nailed to a Christmas tree. He would be nailed to Calvary's tree. 
Because nowhere in the Bible do you find a Christ, Christ mass. Nowhere in the Bible do you find a mass. But you find the one sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world outside the gate, gates of Jerusalem. Jesus was born outside of Jerusalem, away from Jerusalem, Bethlehem, and he suffered and died outside the gates of Jerusalem. Now you see that baby that's in the nativity set, oh, how beautiful, how great. The people of Israel did not want that baby. They hated that baby. And the people of Daytona Beach 2017, hooray, hurrah, don't want the baby. See, the problem with that baby is it grew up. And that baby grew up to be proper. That baby grew up sinless. And that baby grew up in your face to tell you to your face you are a sinner and you are wrong. He walked up to the people that were in religion in that day and said, You snakes, you vipers, you hypocrites. And he would probably do the same thing with American churches today, though he won't come back to the American churches. And with the Bible, let's get Christmas correct, because there is no Christmas in the Bible, so here we go. End the subject. The authority and the contents of the Bible is correct, and man and his traditions are wrong. I will not get into the fact is the wise men were not there. There was not three of them. But we'll get to the fact is wise men do come to God. A wise man will come to Jesus and say, Jesus, you're the king of the Jews. Here's my gold. Jesus, you are the one that's going to buy man back. Here's the silver. And Jesus Christ, you're going to die for mankind. Here's the mark. I would guess, I, I can't say that, that's wrong, so I can't say that. Good thought. But when Christ lived on this planet and he made a list and he said, I would like a drink of water. No one gave to Jesus his request. The woman at the well, she didn't give him a drink of water. When he was on the cross, give me drink, I thirst. They gave him vinegar. And yet, you expect as Americans, I make a list, I check it twice, and Santa Claus, who is hell, is going to give me everything I want. If I don't, I'm going to show a pussy face. I am going to return. I'm going to go get what I want. I'm going to do whatever I want, have a tantrum, because I didn't get what I wanted. And yet when God gives you the one and only gift that you can use, you have a puppy attitude towards God that you don't want to hear it, you don't want it, shut up and go home with that Jesus. And yet, if I have a Jesus that comes and plays, we're all going to sing under the mistletoe and mama kiss gra uh, grandpa and whoever else kind of thing, rocking around the tree. Oh, play it loud. We like that. We enjoy that. But that joy, that wonderfulness, that peace on earth will not survive when you die and go into hell because you have not believed on Jesus Christ as your Savior. Oh, Lucifer, where's the beer in hell? I lied. You never read John 8, 44. Oh, Lucifer, where's my friends in hell? I didn't tell you it was darkness. You can't see anything in hell. And yet we have a festival called Christmas where there are lights. 
And Jesus Christ is the light of the world for you to believe and have your sins cleansed by God alone. Let's look at the lights of Christmas. Red. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sins. Red lights. Stop what you're doing and come to God and repent and get right. Let us come together. Though your sins be as scarlet, red, they shall be white, is another light of Christmas. As snow. Snow! That's a Christmas thing, unless you're in Florida. Yellow. Yellow is a Christmas color for lights. Gold. I already said, the wise men. How many were? I don't know. Brought to Jesus, the king of the Jews. Gold. Saying the, the, the deity ship, the kingship, the lordship. Never president. Jesus Christ, the king, crown, gold. The highest standard of money, Jesus Christ, here it is, yours. And yellow twinkles on the, on the lights. Red for the blood, white for purity. Yellow for heavenly kingship. King of kings, lord of lords. Blue. Blue is a light. And that blue represents the holiness, the heavenly for the capital H. Not the H that where uh, NASA travels and Russia travels with Sputnik and the, the junk that's on Mars and the trash that's on the moon. Not that heavenly. But the capital H, heavenly blue of where God abodes upon the throne. Where God allows those who have believed on Jesus Christ to enter through the veil that's been ripped by Jesus. I have access to God by Jesus Christ. If you have not believed on Jesus Christ as your Savior, you do not have that access and you're not guaranteed your prayers will be answered or even heard. If you are not a child of God, God ain't going to listen to you. Santa Claus may listen, but God's not. And Satan will be all too happy to answer your prayer list of your material junk so you will take your eyes off Jesus and put it on Satan. That's a wonderful trickery and liarship of Satan to make you take your eyes off God. So we got blue of God and the heavenly cherubim that surround his throne, that pronounce holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Now let me tell you what Satan says. Ho, ho, ho. Satan Claus is unworthy and cannot say holy, 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 for he is of Satan, the devil, and has not been washed of his sins. And he'll be going to plunk into hell, the lake of fire, with all the cookies he's stolen. And yet Jesus Christ, the blue light, is seated at the heavenly place with a capital H at the right hand of God the Father. You see, Jesus Christ is northerner than the North Pole of Satan Claus. Satan sits where it's cold and a bunch of little people running around him all day long with a wife that says, get out there and get a job besides once a year. But Jesus Christ, seated in the heavenly, capital H, is with God. With the cherubims, with all the angels, praising Him. On this visible planet, all the people supposedly celebrating Jesus has rejected Him. 
And that brings angels to astonishment of how man treats Jesus God. But that's the blue. I hate to break your traditions with the Bible, but... So we've looked at red as the blood, yellow as the gold, white as purity, blue as the heavenly, and silver as the redemption. I think that's all the colors on the, on the Christmas tree. You may have a purple. Purple is the royalty. It was a color in the Bible that the expensive people could wear. It was expensive to make blue and purple. So Mary cannot be wearing purple in her Roman Catholic photographs for the high school reunion because she was poor and could not bring a lamb. Had to bring a pigeon. According to the Bible, she was poor. She couldn't wear purple. It's still the same Jesus that saves. And it's still the holiday season of Christmas that will damn your soul and believe in lies. I hate to ruin your Christmas, but I gotta preach the truth. Sanctify them through thy word, thy word is true. Have I become your enemy because I preach the truth? Many of you here, yes. Thank you. Purple, royalty, the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Royalty, three and one, one and three. Now with that gold and purple, you got to have them together. Because if your kingdom says that Jesus is not God, you don't have the proper biblical Jesus. See, in the Bible, that gold and that purple for the king, for God, was met by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. There's only one man on this planet, past, present, and yet future, that can ever fulfill the gold, that can fulfill the purple, the blue, the red, and the white that is the light of the world. That's Jesus Christ. That's the Christmas lights. Do you know what makes Christmas lights go? Power. You know what Jesus Christ is? Jesus is the power of God for salvation to all that believe on his name and his gospel that he died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now you see, man in his sin needs a death, needs a blood atonement for your sins. The Old Testament suggests and put forth. And Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, would take away the sin of the world. And I have never seen recorded ever, ever, that Satan Claus ever died. Now Satan Claus cannot do nothing for your sins. All the gifts that he has, he does not bring the gift of God, Jesus Christ, to your home through the chimney at night. Sounds like a thief to me. He will steal your soul from God and ho, 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 ho. I don't know, maybe he's looking for a date or something with a ho, ho, ho. I don't know, he's up Satan. And yet we've seen the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Sit on Santa's seat and say, Santa, bring me the gift of God and drop his, his chin down into his lap. Say, Santa, show me your ID. And you say, Jesus, show me your ID. And he breaks out his nail-pierced hands and says, how's that, Thomas? Thomas, my ID, you see the hole in my side? Take your fist and thrust it through. That's the identity of the gift of God, the nail pierced hands, the wound in his side, the Lamb of God, which take away the, the sin of the world. Holy, holy, 
holy versus ho, ho, ho. It was a merry old soul. I think he had a pipe and I think he was drinking, with something, whatever the story goes. I think that was a Nat King Cole. How about the king of music? How about the king of beers? How about the king of kings of all kings of kings? God Almighty came in the flesh, born of a baby in Bethlehem, and suffered and died upon Calvary's cross that you may have eternal life and have it forever. I do not have the talker trucks that my mom gave me for Christmas past. All the candy I have eaten from Christmas past from the stockings. That underwear that mom gave me at Christmas. Oh, God, mom, no, not underwear. I have outgrown it. But today, April 21st, 1987, when I open up the presence of God and receive Jesus Christ as my Savior, it's still alive. It will always be alive. And it came with love, joy, peace, long-suffering, the fruits of the Spirit. And I became a son of God by that day. I received the gift of God, Jesus Christ. You better believe I'm excited about Jesus. And when I stand before God at the judgment seat, judgment seat of Christ, I'm having fun. You may get more than 45 minutes today. When I stand before the judgment seat of Christ, I don't get a credit card bill for my sins. I don't get murder, I don't get sexual, I don't get lies, I don't get thefts, I don't get any of that bills at the judgment seat of Christ. Because they have been paid. All my sins have been paid by the blood of Jesus Christ. I do not see one bill that says paid in full at Calvary. That's it. Some of you are going to get a, a electronic store bill. You're going to get a dot com bill. You're going to get a mall bill. You're going to get a grocery store bill. Light a light bill. A light bill. Didn't we just say the light was Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ gave us the light and he paid the bill for it. That's good. It's great to have a wife that's saved, and it's great to have a daughter that's saved and love the Lord and say, let's go serve God. I'm like, wait a minute, I haven't had my cup of coffee yet. You guys are more excited than I am. I think this is going more than 45 minutes. I guarantee you, I'm enjoying it. I'm still on the lights of the tree. Blue Ash and Santa Claus. You better watch out. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Because the Bible says Jesus is coming one day. Proverbs 15, 3. Behold, the eyes of the Lord are in every... I won't say. I'll, I'll be nice on your ears. Behold, the eyes of the Lord are in every place. Beholding the evil and the good. That sounds like Santa was naughty and nice. Seems like Satan has a savior and God has a savior. And this time of year, we try to put them both together. What cacao do you have with Billy Isle and God? You cannot serve God and you cannot serve Santa. They are not the same. And yet through Jesus Christ, you can serve God. You can serve Jesus and you can serve the Holy Spirit for they are one and one together as a Godhead. Santa's not there. And if Santa knows I've been good or nice and if I've been sleeping or awake, that guy's a pervert because he's been looking in my windows and I need to call 911 and have him arrested. Imagine putting a child on the lap of a man and saying, have you been good? Have you been naughty? Tell me all about it. You put that person in jail today. And yet the Bible says, Christian parents, Jesus said, suffer the little children to come on to me. Jesus is and will not ever be a pervert. He's looking out for the welfare of his creation called mankind.
What's the alternative motive of Satan clause? To deny you before God. And to have you deny God. He is so powerful, Satan Claus. There are adult people that actually believe he exists. There was a news organization, I won't tell you, 1213, that they have prescribed to me in writing that it is their authority that Satan Claus is alive and well. And I tell you, that's fake news. You'll stand before Jesus Christ before you stand before Satan Claus. And Jesus Christ will tell you everything you've done, naughty or nice. By the way, you don't know that naughty and nice is out of Jeremiah. And that naughty becomes evil as you study the Bible. So let's get back to the Christmas light. The power of God is what lights those lights in our heart. The heavenly, the holy, the kingship of Jesus Christ, the royalty heavenly. The blood, the pureness, for what about the Christmas tree? I, 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 I guess if you were Islam, you would sing a song, O Tannum Bomb, O Tannum Bomb, will you blow people up for me, and I will be happy, and give me some virgins. But the Christmas tree. The Christ Mass tree. An evergreen tree. Most preferred. And yet the evergreen eternal life is through Jesus Christ. Hey, there goes one right now. It's dead. You cut the tree down. You murdered the tree. <laughs> It's not going to live without water. Jesus said, I'm the water of life. Whosoever shall drink of this water shall thirst forever after more, but whoever drinks of me shall never thirst. Spiritually, of course. The only one that makes, I love that, the only one that makes the tree happy with the water is the dog. Hey, this is kind of a, a, a kind of forestry kind of taste in the water this week. And yet the tree stands upright. Shall I advise you to read Jeremiah 10? I'll stay away from that. Silver and gold. Deck the halls with the... Uh, Jeremiah 10. About the tinsel and nailing it down in the tree holder. Jeremiah 10. Look for it. Index. J-E-R-E-M-I-A-H. Chapter 10. I'm having fun. I'm loving this. I love holidays. The best holiday I had so far with you guys is April 1st. So here's this tree. It's green. It's evergreen. It's eternal life. It's green. Green is life. It stands upright. In most cases, it stands in your living room. Wow, what's this tree trying to impersonate? Life, water, living. Jesus Christ said, I'm the water of life. I'm the eternal life. Whosoever believes on me shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And... As far as Jewish, Jeremiah chapter 10, it was forbidden for Mary and Joseph to have such a tree in their house or their yard so Jesus would never have seen a Christmas tree. It's forbidden. It's idolatry. No, not Mary. Man, she was great. Of all the virgins in the land of Israel, God said, Mary, you're the one. Now, did Mary know? <laughs> I'm going everywhere with this one. Did Mary know? Today's church cantata, did Mary know? Did you read Gospel of Luke, what, what Gabriel said? Of course she knew. Gabriel told her. Don't you think that Mary had, had those moments that 
mother to son talk and say, son, uh, no one else is listening, but can you just tell me a little more about heaven and God? I can't punish you. You don't do anything wrong. You're God in the flesh. This is have a mother and son talk that's unrecorded according to the last chapter of John because John said if we record everything that Jesus said, man, you need a tractor trailer to go to church with the Bible. But you didn't know that was in there. There's more to the Word of God than what man can give you as far as a gift. Because the gift of God's eternal life forever. Of no hell. You're going to have hell paying your bills. So, here's this tree. That's an idol. Which is against God. And God says, if you serve idols, you're going to make me jealous. You're going to make me angry. And we sing Christmas carols around the tree that angers God that is jealousy. Wow. Somebody didn't read and open their Bible. So, Jesus was born in a manger. We got that down back. But this wasn't December, it was September. He was born to die sinless upon a cross. And the Bible calls that cross a tree. And there's all kinds of speculation what kind of tree that was, dogwood, everything. Eh, it's speculation. It's not in the Bible, so shut up. But the most important thing about the tree, the Calvary of Jesus Christ, he suffered and died there that you may have eternal life. That's what's important. So we get the tree in the living room, and Christ is the living way of God. And so, under that tree is a bunch of presents. Oh, I'm a Christian, but we just do it for the children. There's no idolatry. As you get on your knees, say, oh, presidents, who's it to? Oh, it's to me from Satan Claus. Oh. You're worshiping it. Isn't that such pretty paper? Look at that pretty bowl. Oh, son, please, keep that bowl, keep that bag. I can use it for next year. I can put that in a, in a box somewhere and bring it out the next time we have church. Or seasons. Don't destroy that. It's beautiful. And yet, this time of season, you have forgotten one gift. Time's running out. You need this gift of God. And the problem is the date is not set December 25th. It may be set December 23rd. It would be amazing in America if you were to die a day or two days before Christmas and end up in hell with nothing. It'd be more amazing in America in the streets of Daytona Beach, Florida, USA, IA, and hear the gospel preach and die, quote unquote, Jesus' birthday before then, quote unquote, and end up in the lake of hell forever because you did not receive the gift of God before Christmas. You'd be smacking your head all in turn and say, the gift, the gift, the gift. Oh, I never got to open my gift. I did not even open up the gift of God. I wish that guy would shut up. Tis a season. I wish that guy go away. Deck the halls with closet. We hear it every week, after week, after week. Joy bell ring. Are you listening? Jesus is coming. The gift of God, of all gifts that can be of gifts around this time of season, is eternal life. And you reject it. December 23rd, 2017, 1026 a.m. Do you know that was recorded? You put your name down on a list right now, December 23rd, 1027 a.m. on a Saturday, and God has recorded. You've heard the gospel. I'm checking it twice. You have heard the gospel. The gospel has been presented to you correctly just in case God... Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. You heard through the blessed feet of a preacher has come to you, December 23rd, 1027 a.m. You have rejected. It's recorded. Oh, he's making a list. Checking it twice. He was on the or nice. 
See, God's writing down what you have rejected his son. God's rejecting everything that you have rejected about God, about Jesus, about the Bible. It's being recorded right now at the right white throne judgment. The books will be open. You won't get a gift. You won't get coal. You'll get the lake of fire that burns forever for rejecting Jesus Christ, the gift of God. 1223, 2017, and 1027, you heard about the gift, and it's recorded in the books that you heard, and it's recorded right now. Did he receive it, check it, or no? Right now, it's a no. Don't give Santa Claus that he knows what you're doing, and he's making a list. Give it to God. I'll show you a list in the Bible. Numbers. First Chronicles. Ezra. Nehemiah. The 66 books of the Bible are lists. And God doesn't have a list with your name on it. He has a book with your name on it. And in that book better be written, born again. For Jesus said, you must be born again. You must believe on Jesus Christ to be saved. And if you have not ever received that gift of God, Jesus Christ, you are going to hell. I don't care how many masses you go to. I don't care how many Christmases you celebrate. Without Jesus Christ, you will burn in the lake of fire that burneth forever. Recorded. December 23rd, 10.28 a.m. Hey, you started. He's making a list, checking it twice. I'll just tell you what God's doing. And God has a book in heaven. He says, Starley Hayward, what are you doing on January, I mean, January, December 23rd, 10.29 a.m.? I'm preaching the gospel to a bunch of people that won't listen. Recorded. I like that. Isn't it funny that the gift of God that you're rejecting, God says, I like that. Romans chapter 10, how beautiful are the feet then that preach the, the, the good tidings of peace. Peace and joy as our nuclear bombs fly overhead. Send their armies to us. And yet the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, forever, for eternal, all troubles and problems. Your relatives can't give you joy. Remember last Thanksgiving? Remember that family was there with us? Was that joy? Was that peace? As your dishes were as high as Mount Ararat? Was that joy and peace? It's not family. Love. Yeah, that man that left you with the children because he fell out of love with you, fell in love with somebody else. And love? How about for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. How about that love? A sacrificial love, supposed and sacrificial of the Christmas season. Joy bells, registers ring. I'm so excited. I took your money. Not God. God says, leave that money home. Put that credit card back in your wallet. Now, don't bring those words for there's none that doeth good. No, not one. Come to me with my son, Jesus Christ, and then we'll talk. Come on to me, all ye that are heavy laden. You're heavy laden with the bills and the gifts you're going to get this year. You know, Christmas is unfair. But God is. Christmas is prejudicial, but God is not. They're going to be all over the world. I think that was a song, too. They're going to people going to get up December 25th, and they're going to have nothing at all. And that mama's going to hold that baby in her arms, and that baby's going to take its last breath. That man's going to search through the garbage cans to find his Christmas meal. And yet you say, oh, Christmas is great. Christmas is joyful. Tis the season, all that. For what standards? There's a painting. It's one painting, but it's two paintings in, in one. And both of them have a window. And outside that window is snow, beautiful snow. 
in the one side of the window, there's a kid with a brand new sled. And he's got his sweater on, he's got his mittens, he goes, oh, it's snowing. He's happy. He wants to use that sled. And the other picture, there's a kid there, and it's snowing outside, and the window's cracked, broken. He's got socks on his hands, there are holes. He's shivering. And he says, oh, it's snowing. What's the standard? Oh, Christmas is great. Not for all. And yet God has set the standard by Jesus Christ that whether you be rich or you be dirt poor. God can save the most millions of millionaires ever to be. And he can save a person that's living underneath a bridge right now in a third country surviving on cockroaches. Right here in And God reaches down to that million, multiple, billion, billion, and reaches down to that person that's in Daytona Beach right now in a shopping carriage. That's all they own. And when you give them a can of food, they're in tears because that's royalty to them. My God, my dinner's coming in a can. Sometimes I gotta chase it. Your Christmas is not is the same Christmas as somebody else. This Christmas, a spouse or a parent may have died Christmas is long ago. This Christmas, someone may take a razor and try to end their life. That's unfair. That's ridiculous. That there's two sides of this Christmas season and yet God said in all his fairness, I'll tell you what. I got one gift. And only one gift. And I will tell you what that gift is. I'm like that with my wife. I get her a gift, I got a gift right away. Here it is. I'm too excited, I gotta tell her. And God's too excited about salvation to say, here's a gift. Oh boy, what is it? It's eternal life. Oh God, you ruined it. I wish you guys thought like that when I preached the gift of God. What is it? What is it? Ah, uh, like, oh, shut up. Go home. Where's that DJ? So we paid him to come. I can sing for you. No. Oh, darn. I didn't bring my hymn book. I'll pause for that one. But God has sent forth a gift. And the gift is Jesus Christ, and it fits all. Whether well, you're as skinny as Barbie or as fat as Santa Claus, or even fatter, you can be saved. What must you do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. There's no loopholes. Here's a qualification for salvation. Are you ready? Number one, have you been born a woman? That's conditional clause number one for salvation. Have you been born of a woman? Well, my mother, no, no. Have you been born of a woman? Well, she been, no. Have you been born of a woman? That rules out cats and dogs. I had to bring them up, didn't I? Ruin your holiday. I'm telling you Fluffy's not going to heaven. <laughs> Sorry. No, no. You have to be a human being to, to get this gift. Number two, are you alive? You got to be a human born of a woman and you got to be living to receive this gift. You see, we don't go to cemeteries and preach. You won't do them no good. You can't burn candles for people who died. It's no good. Once you die, that's it. What you've done with Jesus has been predetermined. You receive Jesus, you go to heaven. If you don't receive Jesus, you go to hell. Because I've only been here a half hour. So that one gift is for those that are living and that are humans. Number three. Are you a sinner? <laughs> don't speak so fast. 
is let me talk to your parents or let me talk to your spouse about being a sinner. Now let me tell you a story about great, 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 great grandpa Adam. Adam was sinless. Eve was sinless. And you know one day they stole from God a grape. You say apple, I, I say grape. One grape. They stole it from God because God said, Thou shalt not eat of that fruit. And they took the free grape walking down the aisle too. Um, yum, yum, these grapes are great. And God cursed them with sin and death because they stole the grape. No one here would steal a grape as they're walking around, would they? Or take a little fruit? Not at a farmer's market. No. Boy, well, I had the police here for the last four weeks in a row, but no. You are charged if you steal a pen or a penny by God as a thief. Do you hate somebody in your heart? God's charging you with murder. According to the Bible. That's loud. Have you ever thought of doing something that's not right? You will be charged with that thought even though you didn't act upon it. You are a sinner. To him that knows to do it good and doeth it not to him it is sin. You're sinners right now by rejecting Jesus Christ. I've told you, you need to believe on Jesus Christ. You know what is right and you will not do. To those that know to do good, believe on Jesus to be saved and do it not to him it is sin. I, you're sinners. You're sinning right now, thanks to me and preaching the Bible. So, have you been born of a woman? Are you living? And are you a sinner? Then that gift of God's for you. And that gift of God's to have your sins washed by the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. Without it, your life will be hell after you die. And there's no coming out. It's eternal. So that baby that was born in the manger in Bethlehem about September that you ignorantly worship, and you don't even worship that. You realize that baby doll in the nativity scene is an idol? It's got eyes that see not. It's got a nose that don't stink. I mean, no, nose that don't smell. It's got armpits that don't stink. It's got feet that don't wiggle. That's an idol. And you bow down before it. And the presents are wrapped. Oh, preacher, where are you going to go with this one? I'm going to go to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for asking. Jesus was wrapped, wasn't he? You ever had that one person that, you know, you got to save the wrapping paper, the bowls, you got to neatly fold it. Do you know how they found Jesus wrapping in that tomb that was sealed? They said he was neatly wrapped with a napkin over there. Your present by God for salvation was wrapped in clothes, grave clothes. Does anybody know, still 2017, what that baby was when it was born? It was wrapped in swaddling clothes. How dare you take a time of Jesus' birth, death, and burial, and resurrection and imitate it for a season of Satan claws and fellowship and merriness and go to hell and, when you die? Rocking around a Christmas tree as that rock was rolled away that third day. And the angel's sitting in the body like, hi guys, what you doing? <laughs> Look at that one over there. He's, he's afraid. Hi, Mary. 
What'd you come here to do, Mary? I came here to see Jesus. No, I'm sorry, he's not here. He's risen. So that star that's on top of the tree that's up the highest of high is Jesus Christ. Because Acts chapter 2, he was ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of holiness. The problem is angels don't have wings. But we won't talk about that this week. We're talking about salvation. You know, angels cannot come to you and proclaim the gospel, Acts chapter 10. You know, you cannot hear the gospel outside of a loud mouth preacher in Daytona Beach, December 23rd, 10.43 a.m. God is bringing his Christmas gift to you by me. And that Christmas gift, I'm hoping to show you that Jesus saves. And only Jesus saves. And that gift is for Northerners and for Southerners. And Easterners and Westerners. And all points in the middle. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Minus the other junk. Now that stuff is all junk. Let me ask you a question. If you were to take this holiday and say, remove the gift giving, let's take that away. Let's say Christmas was no gift giving at all. What would the merchants care about you then? They don't care about you. They want your money. Come buy our junk so we can get rich. That's what they're saying at Christmas. They won't lure you into the stores if there was no gift giving this time of year. There would be no commercials if there was no gift giving. You wouldn't know how much this costs without gift giving on the mails and the TV and the radios and the junk. And yet without the gift of God, Jesus Christ, you will end up in hell, burning forever. And you would charge God saying, I never knew, and it would be proper. As you proclaim to God as he tells you to go to hell, you will charge God and say, I never knew. And God would say, December 23rd, 2017 at 10.45 a.m. Remember that guy you mocked and ridiculed and wished to go bye-bye? He told you. That guy I said spoke the truth. He did not lie to you. And he mentioned his name for the fourth time in five years. And you cannot say, I never knew. As much as without the advertising, you would not know what that electronic device is at this store and that store. And without the word of God, you would not know what God has prescribed for you to do. So let me close, not with Merry Christmas, that's too capital -y. Happy Holy Days, no, that's not. Let me close with, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. There's no greater gift. I sound like a jewelry commercial now. There's no greater gift than the gift of God, Jesus Christ.
That's a gift that goes into the heart.